There are three big games in the open world racing category, Forza Horizon 5, Need for Speed Unbound and the newest, The Crew Motorfest. In this video we'll put them head to head across all the main categories, from their gameplay to graphics and even a sound comparison at the end, so stick around. First up is the maps, where you'll spend most of your time, and straight away Horizon 5 and The Crew Motorfest actually feel quite similar, while Unbound is very different. Motorfest is set on the Hawaiian island of Oahu. It's not exactly one-to-one -one in terms of its scale or locations, but stays pretty close just like the Crew 2 did. That still allows for some creativity though, with the likes of racetracks and stunt parks that most definitely aren't there in real life. It's mostly tropical with beaches and forests, but also has some more arid and mountainous areas and of course the volcano, a feature that's also defining of Horizon's map. Talking of Horizon, this takes us to Mexico, but a fictional representation that doesn't stay too close to any real locations. This allows the map to cram in a lot of different landscapes and interesting landmarks, which to some extent mirror those that we see in Motorfest. It is however lacking any big built up urban areas, which gives it a different feel. Luckily they've also given us what we wanted in terms of big drag strips and major jumps though, which end up being hotspots for online players and also easy ways to benchmark your cars. Unbound is also set in a fictional location, Lakeshore City, which has been heavily inspired by Chicago. Like Horizon, the map contains only one main city, but in Unbound it really does dominate the map. The rest is made up of highways and backroads with just enough room for some off-roading crammed in too. Now when it comes to graphics and detail, I'm glad to say that Horizon has finally been given a run for its money. The Horizon games have always been known and loved for their graphics, with screenshots and now even gameplay looking sometimes photorealistic, but let's look at its latest challenger first. Ubisoft has really stepped it up with Motorfest, largely helped by having a more normal sized map, at least compared to the Crew 2. This has led to a huge leap forwards in terms of the density and quality of game assets, which is a big part of how immersive the worlds feel. Aside from that, lighting is the next biggest improvement, it looks seriously good in the trailers and I'm happy to say this holds up in the actual game. Cars look better than ever, especially in direct sunlight, and the effects on wet roads are also top notch now. Coming on to Need for Speed, it's nothing absolutely spectacular in terms of graphics, but it looks good enough to feel next gen and can be very immersive to play. Not sure about the cartoon effect stuff, but I'll leave that up to you, and you can turn most of it off by the way. The smaller map means most areas feel like they've had some really good attention paid to them, with details like shortcuts, jumps, and other features being very common in races. None of that was an accident. It certainly comes into its own at night, which is a good job since you spend a lot of time playing then, and overall it possibly handles that scenario the best. But the big question is, can either of these one-up Horizon? And this is very subjective, so if you'd like to draw your own conclusions, check out my full side-by-side -side comparison in the description. For me though, the answer is no, but only just. Need for Speed is a small margin behind in nearly every department, which rules that out, but Motorfest is seriously close in a lot of cases. There's a big difference in the direction that each is going though. Motorfest flexes big bright colours almost everywhere you go, with colour grading applied to some of the races based on their theme. Horizon however is incredibly raw but realistic across the board, which while maybe not looking quite as exciting, is more realistic. Now before we move on to the gameplay comparison, this video has been very kindly sponsored by Brilliant.org, an incredible platform for learning everything from pre-algebra and logic to the concepts behind the most topical industries of today, like AI, cryptocurrency and programming. For example, the content covered in their Neural Networks course is exactly the basis of how ChatGPT works. Their thousands of bite-sized lessons let you learn at your own pace whenever you have time, and it's a genuinely enjoyable and effective way to learn, as everything is interactive and visual. It's great for picking up new skills and knowledge, whether you're looking to go further in an area you already study or work in, or want to branch out and learn something completely new. Fresh content is added monthly, and they also have a great mobile app, so you can even learn on the go. You can try all this for free for 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash average game reviews or the link in the description. And the first 200 people will also get 20% off their annual subscription. So moving on to the gameplay then. At their cores, these games play quite similarly. Open world racing, you know what to expect. Each one is unique though to a varying degree, so here's the highlights of each that you won't really find in any of the others. For the crew Motorfest, it has to be its racing diversity. We'll compare the cars properly soon, but Motorfest offers a lot more than just cars, with boats and planes added into the mix, because why the hell not? In all seriousness though, this time round they're only really here because they were in the last game, as they've taken more of a back seat this time with a greater focus on cars now. That said, even within the cars the diversity is unmatched, from buggies to monster trucks and even F1 cars. There are still races for boats and planes, but these fill just one of the many new playlists, which are newly added groups of races that follow a particular theme or car culture by the way. There's also a handy quick swap feature which makes free roam a blast, and multi-class racing is another gameplay highlight for me. 
On the other hand, Horizon 5's gameplay is perhaps the most ununique in some ways. I'd say its main selling point is the core fact that it's a Horizon game, and that really does say a lot about the reputation of the series. It follows a similar formula to past games, open the progression with a better festival backstory and then keep people hooked with the graphics, new cars and showcase events. You must admit, it clearly is a formula that does work, but especially if you're newer to the series. A greater focus on multiplayer modes is also very apparent with this game, with the usual online racing options as well as more original modes like the Battle Royale Eliminator and lots of multiplayer minigames. The new Events Lab feature also lets players create and share their own custom races, which can be great fun and does a huge amount for replayability, and we do also get a version of this feature in Motorfest by the way. Need for Speed sets itself apart with its trademark police chasers. Again we have a day-night cycle that facilitates a risk reward system that actually keeps this game really exciting. Whenever you race, you'll increase your heat level, pretty much a wanted level that decides how much the police will try and screw you over if you get spotted. The heat levels 1 to 5, with 1 being a couple of cars that will give up easily, and 5 feeling like you've started World War f 3. If you get this far, good luck. It's a clever system where higher paying races will give you more heat, and you only bank your money when you get to a safe house, which also ends that day or night. This means that you end up with quite a lot on the line in some police chases. Get busted and all that time that you put into races that day has gone down the drain. This makes the gameplay incredibly intense at times and also makes the progression satisfying. As you get faster cars, you can afford to go up higher heat levels and still have a chance of escaping. Another worthwhile mention is that Unbound is the only of the three games to have a proper narrative backbone, rather than just a light backstory as we see in the other two. There's a whole prologue, a good few cutscenes and a big build up to a race against your arch rival, so if you'd like something a bit more structured, this might be the game for you. Next up, a quick look at the cars. Horizon and Motorfest both have over 600, although for Motorfest that does include boats and planes too. Need for Speed on the other hand sits at just above 140, a bit disappointing in comparison. The choice is at least pretty good, there's a nice range of cars for most tastes and you are guaranteed very good customization for the most part, no interior or cockpit view though. Car damage is also pretty good in Need for Speed with impacts affecting performance as well as just cosmetics. Horizon 5 also has a decent damage model now, meanwhile in the Crew Motorfest you can drop a Bugatti from the f***ing stratosphere and it's not even scratched. In terms of car customization, each game is again a bit different. The Crew Motorfest has great physical customization on most cars, with wings, bumpers, bonnets and all the usual bits having loads of options. I must also mention the interior customization, as you can change the upholstery material and colour, and on some cars even the dashboard material, a super underrated feature if you play in cockpit view a lot. Unfortunately, the performance customization is not as great. It's a loot based system where you'll be rewarded random parts from races. There's different rarities and performance levels, but it's pretty uninspiring as you're left just increasing the number on that part. No turbos or engine swapping whatsoever. In Forza though, you get all of that good stuff. There's all the same physical customization from bigger wings to wide bodies, but here these parts also impact performance, be it more downforce, weight, or adding further adjustability. You can then change up everything under the bonnet, and many changes also impact the sound of the engine and your exhaust. This is certainly a one-up on Motorfest's offering. Need for Speed is then almost exactly the same story. There's tons of options, with many being part of body kit sets, so it's easy to find something that looks good and works well together. There's also dedicated exhaust sound tuning, just like in Forza, as well as loads of choice for swapping your engine, gearbox and turbo setup. While we're on the topic of cars, their handling is also a big differentiator between these three games. Now while none of these are purest racing sims, Horizon has the most realistic handling. Cars feel different in the way you'd expect, with oversteer and understeer also being well pronounced. It's also difficult to drift unless you have a car really well set up for it, which is a good indicator of some level of realism. Need for Speed on the other hand has more arcadey handling, with a drift mechanic often being the fastest way to go around a corner. If you don't like the idea of this, you can set up cars to drive them more normally, but if you're not up for a lot of drifting, then this may not be the game for you. This handling is deliberate though, as it's fun and satisfying to drive, but in no way going for realism. Heading back over to Motorfest, handling has come a long way since The Crew 2, where it was possibly the biggest letdown of the game. This is thankfully no longer the case, as cars actually have some weight to them now. It's not quite on the level of Forza, but you do get a sense of weight transfers through corners and actually have to brake to go round them. It's also not a drift fest like Unbound, in Motorfest you've got dedicated cars for that. In terms of multiplayer modes, Horizon and Motorfest are the strongest, with both letting you play most events in co-op and also supporting larger original modes. Horizon's highlight is the Eliminator, which supports up to 72 player lobbies, while Motorfest boasts 28 player Grand Races and 32 player Demolition Royales. 
Motorfest has also got its custom show where players can enter their own car builds and vote on their favourites each week. Need for Speed on the other hand feels like a pretty bare bones offering in comparison. You can absolutely race with other people in up to 16 player races, but there's just noticeably less to do with them than in the other two games. Another quick mention is that all these games support crossplay, however Horizon is of course not on PlayStation. Before our conclusion then, here's a direct sound comparison with all the cars left stock internally. Comment which you think is best. So there we have it. For night racing thrills, more structured story driven gameplay and a single player focus, Need for Speed Unbound is the game. If you want ultimate graphical realism and the most accurate handling, head to Forza. You can't go too wrong. Motorfest is then filling the gap between the two. Probably the better game world, the best racing diversity by far and a more arcadey graphics and handling style than Forza. It really just depends what you're after, so I hope this video has given you a good idea of the offerings of each. If you fancy picking up any of these games, you can get 10% off all of them with code AGR10 at Gamivo.com. That link is in the description. But that's everything, so if you have enjoyed this video, then a like or even a sub would be absolutely amazing. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.